The proof in this video illustrates some of the trickier maneuvers that we can make using our derived rules. Let's start at the top. Line 1. We do see that the tilde is the main connective. Now, I know people look at this and that just looks really ugly, but you see the tilde is the main connective and that tells you De Morgan's or Arrow Exchange. And then you say, what's the main connective inside? So just cover up the parentheses. What is the main connective inside that outer set of parentheses? I hope you can see that inside it's the arrow. Since it's an arrow, we're doing arrow exchange. Now notice, I think being able to parse a formula like this is really what logic is all about. Do you see that this counts as P and this counts as Q? that this formula just is tilde p arrow q. Well if we know that then we know what we're going to do on line 3. It says the arrow turns into an ampersand. Okay, that's easy. What happens to the p part? It doesn't change one bit. The p part is everything between the first parenthesis and the arrow. So I'm going to rewrite exactly that. Tilde, tilde R and T. I'm not changing even a parenthesis of P itself. This outer parenthesis is not part of P. That's the parenthesis that's right there. Okay, so that's P and now we're supposed to add a tilde to Q. So that would just be tilde H on the other side. So one arrow exchange. It's the practice exercises which are supposed to help you get good at manipulating formulas like this. Okay, so that's an ampersand. That's the payoff for doing arrow exchange is it turns into an ampersand, so definitely let's pull that apart. We'll put tilde, tilde R ampersand T on line 4, and then we'll put tilde H on line 5, and that's 3 ampersand out, done twice. Okay, now you might notice, even before we go back up to the top, you might just notice that line 4 has also got a tilde as its main connective. Well, that's great news. We might as well just jump in and work on that. It has an ampersand on the inside, so we're doing the second version of De Morgan's. Well, we know that when we're doing De Morgan's, we are supposed to switch the connective, so it'd be ampersand to wedge, and then distribute the tilde. So P already had a tilde on it, therefore it's now going to be tilde tilde R, and then we'll have tilde T on the back side. And that would be four De Morgans. All right. Um, now that's a wedge. That's not as nice as the other version of De Morgans that produces an ampersand. But it looks like it's time to check some things off. We worked on one, three, and four. And now I guess it's time to slow down and think about what else we've got. Line 2 has an arrow as its main connective. When an arrow is the main connective, there are two rules that you have to think about. If you look at the useful chart, the useful chart will tell you the two rules to think about are arrow out and modus tollens. All right, well to do arrow out on line 2, we would have to have tilde M and H. And obviously we do not have that right now. Yes, if you're super creative, you could actually build it, but that's not something I'm encouraging you to do. So we can't do arrow out. Can we do modus tollens? Well, to do modus tollens, what would we need to have? Just looking at line two, we can recognize that it would be tilde tilde N ampersand tilde t. To do modus tollens, you have to have the negation of the q part. q itself is everything after the arrow. So just take everything after the arrow and add a tilde to it, and that's what it means to have tilde q. So I take a look. Do I have tilde tilde n and tilde t? And the answer is I don't, and right now I can't build it either. However, we may end up building it briefly. 
Okay, so at this point I can't work on line 2. 5 is uninteresting. What about 6? I do need to stop and think about it. And what are the two rules you have to think about for a wedge? Well, they are DA and wedge out. To do disjunctive argument, you have to have one more tilde than the piece you're working against. So if we were going to do disjunctive argument on 6, what would we need to find? It would have to be tilde, tilde, tilde R or tilde, tilde T. And we take a look and we don't have either of those either. We don't have either of those right now. The moral is we're stuck at the top. We looked at 2, we looked at 6, can't work on them right now, so it's time to go to the bottom. When we go to the bottom, we see we have a wedge, and so that is tilde out for the wedge. The bottom-up strategy for a wedge is to make a box and assume the opposite. I always like making straight boxes, but uh, somehow it doesn't always work out right. Um, provisional assumption for tilde out. There we go. And we're going to be looking for a contradiction. Assuming the opposite of a wedge is always going to require putting it in parentheses. I like to take it and write it in the middle at the top and then add parentheses and add a tilde. So the bottom-up strategy for a wedge is to assume the opposite and the payoff after you've assumed the opposite is that it will always have a tilde as its main connective so now you'll be doing De Morgan's. And when I do De Morgan's on this, well I kinda did that in the wrong order, I switch the connective and then I distribute the tilde. So gets tilde R and tilde tilde N, that will be seven De Morgan's. And that's an ampersand. It should always be an ampersand when you're using this particular process. It's because you can do this De Morgan's that we wanted to assume the opposite of that wedge. And so tilde R on line 9, tilde tilde N on line 10. And that's going to be 8 ampersand out, done twice. At this point is, I think, one of the trickier things... Oh, no, I'm a step ahead of myself. At this point, we go back and think about lines 2 and 6. It's line 6 that our attention should really go, at, go, on, go to at the moment. If you look at line 6, we just said you'd have to have tilde 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 R or tilde tilde T. Do we have either of those? And the answer is we don't, but we have single tilde R and we have this wonderful double negation rule that allows us to add two tildes whenever we need, so we can actually build tilde 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 R. And that, of course, would be 9 double negation. Now, why do we want to do that? I know that can look a little crazy, but go back to line 6 and let's put a circle around P and a square around Q. When you do that, you say that, okay, P or Q, at least one part has to be true. Every time you see P or Q, I think you should say to yourself, at least one of these has to be true. Either this part has to be true or this part has to be true. But now when we have tilde, tilde, tilde R, we can see that we are saying it's not the P part. It's not that part, therefore it must be the tilde T part. And that would be 611 disjunctive argument. Okay, so we can cross off some more things. 6 and 11. We also worked on 7 and 8 and 9. Well, clearly now our attention is on line 2, and here is where I think is one of the trickiest things I can ask you to recognize. To do arrow out, you'd need to have tilde M and H, and you have to be especially tricky to build that, and that basically involves doing a reverse De Morgan's, but that's not what you should have to think about. Instead, you should say, what about doing a modus tollens here? 
and we pointed out that you'd have to have tilde tilde n and tilde t. Do we have that? Well, notice we can build it. To build it, you'd have to have n and tilde t, and then you could do double negation. Do we have n and tilde t? Well, we have tilde tilde n, and so what we're going to do is on 13, we have to do the double negation to get just n by itself by 10 double negation. Now having done that, we're going to put it together with line 12 and build n ampersand tilde t by 12, 13 ampersand n. And then having done that, we really need for it to look like this, so we have to do the double negation and get tilde tilde n ampersand tilde t. That's 14 double negation. The result of all this work is that we can now do the modus tollens. And when we do the modus tollens, what are we going to get? We will get tilde tilde m ampersand h. Because you always add a tilde when you do modus tollens. So that would be 215 modus tollens. And again, I seem to be running out of space in this proof here, but do you see what we've gotten to? Here's two tildes outside parentheses. This, this proof has got a bunch of double negation stuff going on in it, and I think I'm going to write it over onto the side here. On line 17, I'm going to do double negation and get m ampersand h by 16 dn. Now that I have m and h, I can break that up and get m and h by 17 ampersand out. And now I finally have a contradiction because there's 19 is, line, is h and 5 is tilde h. And so here on line 20, I'll go ahead and put it in the bottom of this box. h ampersand tilde h by 5, 19 ampersand in. And now I can be done. 21 is the entire box, 7 through 20. And what's the strategy for a wedge? Tilde out. So 7 through 20, tilde out, and we are done.